recently made this little paper tube box, you know, similar to this that I've been making like a crazy woman lately. And I painted it with some of this DIY paint from Debbie's Design Diary. And I used her uh, wet distressing technique on it. And, I mean, it turned out really cool. I added some gold watercolor because, you know, sometimes I like a little something shiny. And, it, it, I mean, it really turned out beautifully. And I've had lots of requests for a demonstration for how this technique is done. Okay, let me tell you, I am still experimenting with the paint and the technique because it's just not like anything I've ever used before. So we're going we're gonna to muddle through it together. I've chosen this to paint, this little container I made years ago. It sits in my living room and I keep wrapped candies in it. But um, it's, it's looking a little rough. It was made, the bottom part was made out of book pages. And then this top part, these were all newspapers. And, you know, the book pages, everything is varnished and they stayed really nice. And the newspapers, um, they weren't really white to begin with, you know, because newsprint is not white. And I think just over the years, either they've yellowed more or I'm just noticing it more, but they just look dirty now because the off-white up against the white just makes them look dirty. So I'm just not happy with it. And, you know, it's got some, I mean, it's like I use, <laughs> I use my stuff for the most part. And it's just kind of get looking a little bit worn. So I'm going to redo this. I'm going to paint this with this paint. And um, maybe this effect or something kind of like it. I want more blue in it because my living room, my um, curtains and my throw pillows are all this, pretty much this shade of blue, which is why I bought this color. And I painted this little ball. I was just kind of practicing. But I really like how this turned out. So I think I'm going to do this kind of like this, only um, I'll use more than just the one, the one color of DIY paint. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, first of all, the problem I ran into here is that I, I made the box, you know, which looked kind of like that. And then I just started slapping paint on it because this is what you can do with this DIY paint. It is clay based and has some, I think it has chalk in it too. So it's one of those, and it's a furniture paint, y'all. This was made for furniture. Now, it you can use it on pretty much any surface, but, you know, it's happiest on furniture, and I'm slapping it on paper. And I just slapped it on there because, you know, this clay-based paint, you don't have to prep the surface of furniture. <laughs> I found that some prepping on the paper would probably have been wise. And the reason is because when you do the wet distressing, you're rubbing back the paint that you put on. So whatever's underneath is going to show, and a lot of my paper colors started showing through. And, and a lot of times I like that. I like for the whatever I started with to show through, and I like its, its recycledness to kind of show. This, for this particular one, I did not want that, and I fought with it because of that. So I decided, okay, if I'd prime it in some way ahead of time which like I said on, on furniture is not necessary but just depending on the look you're going for and the surface that you're working with it might need to be primed and that's what I did over here and when I say prime I'm using that really loosely because <laughs> I was out of gesso I think I had some white gesso but I didn't I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to rub my colors back and have white show through you know, if I was going to do that, I would just leave the paper on there because, you know, you rub this a little bit and it's going to turn white, right? So, I, um, I was out of black gesso, but I did find this uh, Deco Art So Soft Shimmering Pearls. This is fabric paint. And, okay, fabric paint is kind of permanent-y, isn't it? Yeah. So, I thought this might be a little bit harder to rub off. And then when I do the wet distressing and, and reveal kind of what's underneath, it might be interesting. And it was. And the, the shiny that you're seeing is at the end I went through and I dry brushed some of this Lumiere, which is also 
um, if you heat set it, it's permanent on fabric. So, um, yeah, I put that on there and then I sealed the whole thing. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. So this is what we're going to start with over here. I don't know that I have enough of this fabric paint to do this whole thing. So um, I may just thin it out, and I'm wondering how bad that's going to be if I thin it out. I don't know how far I can thin it and still get decent coverage, because that's kind of what I want is coverage. Here's what we're going to do. Okay, think, Shannon. I'm going to start on this side. Yeah, I'm going to start here. And just see how far I get with this. I could mix something with it. I just don't have, I don't want to mix like an acrylic paint or any of my, you know, craft paints because those are going to come off in water. You rub those, you put them on paper, you rub them with something wet, they're going to come off. Um, fabric paint will too, but it's a little bit more difficult. I had to really rub to get it to come off on the other one. So... I wonder if I just go ahead and mix this with another one. Do I have another one? Let's see what I've got. Okay, I think this will work. This is a Prussian blue, same fabric paint. And um, if it shows through this, I think it's going to be okay. So, okay, that's what I'll do. I'll kind of mix these two because, you know, I don't have much of this left. And this is really, it says Shimmering Pearls. It's got some serious <laughs> glitter going on in there that's kind of odd and off-putting on its own, but I didn't mind it for this. So, let's just... Oops. Squeeze some of that out. Mix some of that in there with it, and really, I'm not. I don't care about color. I'm. I just. I want to make more. <laughs> I just need my paint to go further. That's my goal. So I'm gonna do that. And now I'm just going to paint my whole thing. And uh, we'll just start there. And yeah, see this, this just, I guess, because this is fabric paint, you just get instantly awesome coverage. I might be able to do my whole thing with just what I've got here. And I kind of want to get down in the, you know, in between the little layers. And I'm probably going to have to, you know, do some, get a little brush and get a little fussy around here just to get everything covered like I want it. But that is what I'm going to do. So let me fuss over this for a little bit. And then I'll come back and we will get to the fun part. So that was a lot more tedious than I wanted it to be. <laughs> There's a lot of nooks and crannies in there, y'all. I mean, my nooks had crannies that I didn't even know about. <laughs> so anyway, got it done. Um, covered pretty well, I think. And then I even went in and I just sprayed it with a, a clear uh, matte sealer just to hopefully kind of make it more difficult to rub this off. I have no illusions. I, I'm pretty sure I will be able to rub it off. But with the, the spray sealer over it, maybe it'll be a little harder. So we'll just see. We'll see what happens. All right. So I want to start painting now. I've got three colors of the DIY paint. This is Kissing Booth. And Queen Bee. And mermaid tail and I think I want mermaid tail to show up most of all because yeah, I want that to be kind of the predominant color these two can peek through um, I think I'm going to start with this one this kissing booth and yeah I'm just going to start with it <laughs> and we're just, we'll see what happens I don't know 
I've got just some not really awesome brushes and th these will be good for kind of getting in the little you know the little creases and I'm not going to try to just cover every square inch of everything I'm saying this but y'all know I'm gonna I'll go into OCD mode I'm sure but anyway what I'm going to do is just start whoop, putting this on <laughs> just making a mess okay now this um wet why am I saying wet no not wet okay I kept wanting to say wet resist that's not it it's wet distressing thing that we're gonna do is uh <laughs> I lost my train of thought again okay wet distressing I have the paint oh yes it I'm pretty sure you are gonna need this paint <laughs> to make this work or a clay based paint and I, I just don't think there's like a ton of those out there I could be wrong but um, I don't think there's a lot so you're yeah you're gonna have to pick up this paint or something similar somewhere and no matter what brand you get what kind you get it, it's gonna be a little pricey or at least it is in my book these are little eight ounce jars and I found this locally at a uh, like a flea market. You can sometimes find them at flea markets or antique malls. Some of the booths might have you know different kind of paints for refinishing furniture and stuff. And she charged fourteen dollars for it. The only other alternative is to order online. You can order from. Uh, Debbie's Design Diary, and even she says, you know, try to find a local supplier, and she gives you, um, you know, you can go to the website, I'll put the links down below and everything, where you can look and, and see if you've got a local supplier in your area, because paint, you know, this is paint, this is going to be heavy and expensive to ship, um, so yeah, you can get it online, for, I've seen it for $13 instead of $14, but, um, you know, then there's that shipping, and then my local girl sells it for $14 because she can, because, you know, the only alternative is to, you know, pay $13 and then a fortune and a half to have it shipped, so uh, it's kind of irritating, but whatever. Anyway, it's, it's going to run you, you know, probably a minimum of $13 or more for the little 8-ounce container. Uh, I think it's going to last like almost forever because it takes very little to cover completely uh, and well. Now if you were doing furniture you know you might want to do two coats. I don't know but just for this what I'm doing one coat is plenty seems to be anyway. And uh, So it's going to it's gonna last a while, but yeah, it is expensive, and like I said, I just don't know of any other, even chalk paints don't do the same as this paint does. I've used a lot of different chalk paints in the past, and they, they don't act the same. There's magic in here. I think one of the ingredients is love. Where is it? Maybe it's on her wax. Oh yeah, the first ingredient is love. And I think that's what makes the magic here. It's that love. You just don't get that ingredient in every product. So, uh -huh. yeah, there's that. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's, I can't really give you a cheaper alternative because I don't think there is one, or at least I have not run across one yet. And y'all know I like to do stuff on the cheap, but sometimes... To get what you want, you're just going to have to shell out for it. So I'm going to keep froofing around and get me some red on here, top and bottom, just kind of all over. And um, then I'll come back and I'll show you how I'm going to add the yellow. Then we'll do the blue and then we're going to distress. We got stuff to do, but I just, I don't want to bore you with sitting here watching me put paint on. I think you can probably handle this part and you can see that I'm just using a whatever brush and just slapping it on there so you can do this right yeah okay <laughs> 
I will be back. I'm making good progress, y'all. I've just gone in and put some yellow kind of haphazardly everywhere using another, you know, super fancy brush. <laughs> and I chose this one because I've been literally dipping into my paint and then just like doing this, you know, find a hole and do this. And so I just wanted kind of a crappy brush. A couple things to keep in mind. You might want to pour some paint out onto a palette if you're worried about contaminating your paint because this will pick up other colors and so you can either pour it out or I just kind of wipe my brush off and then dip it back in and when this paint dries the clay in it makes it look super chalky and you can kind of see here this is kind of halfway wet halfway dry and see how really chalky the dry parts look? That's what's going to happen. That's normal. And then there's a little technique for, you know, bringing the richness of the colors out when you're done. But, um, yeah, be careful about mixing colors if that's not what you intend to do. You can blend this paint perfectly fine. And you can just use a crappy brush to just go in and blob it on. And that's basically what I'm doing. I'm going to still get into some of the little areas some more with this yellow. And then I'm probably, I'll let that dry really good. And then I'm probably going to cover everything with the blue. Because that's what I want my predominant color to be. And then we can just wipe back parts of it here and there to, help, you know, make these colors peek through. In theory, I don't know if this is going to work, y'all. Because I've not done it quite like this before with putting the, the fabric paint on the bottom. I mean, I kind of, sort of did that here, but not really. <laughs> I went kind of an extra step here. So this is all new. We're learning together. So yeah, I'm going to finish that just kind of using this little brush to put this in all the little, little hidey holes. And then I'll put on the blue and then let everything dry and come back and we'll be ready to start the fun part although not that this wasn't fun this is really fun using this paint where you can just kind of blob it in and, <laughs> and have fun with it so I'm gonna go do that some more <laughs> yeah you got to make that sound I think it's about time for us to start wet distressing I covered um, most of my little container here with the blue paint and I've got the red and the yellow underneath. And then, you know, we did the uh, fabric paint kind of base coat in case I rub all the way through, which I don't know. I may, may not. not yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of flying blind here because, you know, I did this on this box, but I did it a little different and I kind of muddled through it. So I don't know what's going to happen here, but we're going to find out. I have a couple more little interesting facts about this paint. Uh, these are my brushes from yesterday and I just took and you know brushed off the excess on some scrap papers like this. This is what it looks like when you brush it off and then it dries. It's very uninteresting but then you wax it and it comes to life. Yeah all those colors just kind of uh, the come to life. I can't think of another metaphor. That's We're just going to stick with that one. They come to life. So anyway, I did that and then I didn't even bother rinsing my brushes. I just let them dry out just to show you that um, how not like acrylic paint this is because had I done this to, you know, acrylic paint in a brush, even if I got a lot of the paint out, it would still have hardened my brushes something terrible. This does not. I can go in, wash these, you know, in warm water. They're going to be fine. This one had quite a bit on it. <laughs> like it's hard, like acrylic paint would be. But um, all I need to do is just soak it and then it will soften up. The paint will come off and you can go from there. I think hot water would probably be better, but I, this is all I've got here. So let's just let it soak and hopefully I'll remember to check on it later. 
So um, one other thing about this paint is if you like to hurry up your drying, as I tend to do, and you use your heat gun, this paint doesn't bubble up like acrylic paint. You know, some acrylic paints, you heat them in one spot too long, it'll start to bubble. And then, you know, it makes like a skin because the outside dries before the underneath and it, it gets weird. That's the acrylic base in it. it. It's like a plastic and it gets bubbly. This doesn't. Like you can put a blob of paint down. You can heat it all day long with your heat gun. It doesn't bubble because there's no acrylic in it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really an advantage if you like to, you know, speed up your drying time with the heat gun, which I did here and there on this, and then I remembered, oh yeah, this is held together with a whole lot of hot glue, so I had to step away from that. Um, okay, let's get to the distressing part. What we need to do is just add some water and rub it back, and however you do that is up to you. On the last one, I used a toothbrush added water and then just kind of rubbed it around a little bit not too hard because you'll just rub everything off you can do um, you know spray a little water on there you want to kind of probably do small sections at a time and I've used a paper towel to rub it back and a cloth and like I said the toothbrush just figure out what works best for you. And this did dry overnight. Um, so we may have to do a little more rubbing than I might normally. Oh, it's already, it's already getting fabulous. And if you watch any of the videos with this paint, with um, Debbie or, who's that other girl? Um, the turquoise iris. They, I mean, just the magic that they work on furniture is incredible. But they will do a lot of blending as they're painting by spraying with water as they go, which is very cool. Um, I'm not going to do that here because this is paper, and it, this is not even like good paper. <laughs> Too much water will cause it to, um, you know, start to rebel against us, even though I've got a kind of, I've got a sealer on it, basically. But yeah, that doesn't, uh, that's not enough of a barrier, I don't think, so I'm not going to push my luck. You know, if this was like a, if I was doing this with some good watercolor paper or something, then yeah, I might push it a little harder, but that's not where we're at right now. Oh yeah, okay, this is just beautiful. And I don't think, let me take my glasses off and put this right up in my face. Oh yeah, I have. I have rubbed all the way down to the, um, that fabric paint that we put on in the beginning, but I don't see anywhere that I've rubbed through it. So let's see if you can see what's happening. And this is still looking very chalky because, you know, we haven't put our wax on it. There is also a um, top coat sealer in the DIY paint line. And I think that it will bring out the colors like the wax. But here's what I found. Just going over it with like polycrylic doesn't really work. Um, I, I, again, I think it's that ingredient, that love that she puts into the wax. <laughs> you know, I don't know. There's just something special about it um, that pulls the colors out and makes them awesome. And Daddy Vans doesn't even do exactly the same. Because I thought, oh, wax. Wax is wax. I'll just use Daddy Vans. Yeah, kind of, sort of, but not really. And their ingredients are a little bit different. And uh, it's not really a matter of uh, which one's cheaper because they're really about the same price, I think. Oh, they're pretty close. This is looking really good. Oh yeah, it's doing just like I wanted. See, I wanted to keep it mainly blue and then just have some other colors just kind of show through here and there. 
and with the wet distressing it's a different look than if I just took some sandpaper and sanded it down on you know on furniture you might can get something similar with wet sandpaper but on this I don't want to sand this because um, this is paper and just the slightest little too much sanding and I'm going to be down to paper showing through that I do not want to show through or I'm going to you know just completely destroy my project now here's what I, I figured out last night as I was painting and I probably should not have bothered to go into all these little tiny spaces with those other colors I should have just you know left them and did the blue only because I'm not going to be able to get in there to distress much of anything right it's going to be kind of a tight fit so yeah probably wasn't a need to um, use the other colors in there or I should have just picked one to put in there and then just left it at that because um, it was just kind of a, a waste of time to do that uh, but I did it, so, you know, we're just going to say, okay, and keep going. So, this is going to, this will take a little time. I'm, it's not going to take as much as I thought it was going to, because it's, um, I don't have to be as careful as I did with that other one. I think that uh, base coat of the fabric paint, along with the coating it with polycrylic, has worked really well. Because I've got down to some dark areas in here that are probably that fabric paint, but nothing has gone through yet. Now, as I continue to um, kind of abuse <laughs> all of this, that might change. But for now, this is working. And this little toothbrush works pretty good, too, because it's it's kind of soft and I'm not really going at it too hard but I am able to get into some of the small spots and distress a little bit so I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me do this entire thing but if I hit another area that's different or, you know, something interesting happens, I will come back and show you. Oh my gosh, that was really... Ooh, I took off more there than I intended, and I'm glad because look how pretty. That's just gorgeous. And you just can't get this kind of look with sanding. It's this special paint and the wet distressing. Okay, I'll keep going. I'll come back when I have more to show. I am just about to finish up here. I've got most of my bowl distressed. And I was able to get into some of the little places, you know, that I talked about that I'd probably ignore. Um, I started out trying this little swab thing which worked great for about 30 seconds, then all the cotton came off. So I took one of a pallet, plastic pallet knife and just kind of wrapped my cloth around it. And then I could kind of, you know, get into some of these spots. And oh, that's actually still working pretty good. Yeah, that worked really well. Some of them I just kind of, you know, did my brush over and over. Toothbrush works really well. Um, use what you got. You'll figure it out. But, the, yeah, the wiping with the cloth is the, that's the thing that um, I used most when I could. So, I think what I'm going to do, I've got kind of the front part of the little beads kind of a little bit distressed. You can see we're in places. I did get all the way down to the white, you know, the paper, but I find that I don't mind it because it's just here and there, and it's just like a little peek into what's underneath, and you know, I tried so hard to completely avoid getting any of it, and then I find that, oh, it's kind of okay. It was not okay on this box. I didn't like it, but for whatever reason, I'm liking it on this box. <laughs> So, okay, um, 
let me show you maybe I will zoom in a little uh, yeah like that and I'm doing kind of the inside of just these last few beads and I'm just gonna dip my toothbrush in my dirty water and I'm only doing like about three or four at a time and see my toothbrush is just kind of taking that off and then so pretty I just have to be careful not to rub too hard that's that's my uh my issue because I'm so heavy-handed so I'm gonna finish off all those beads I'm gonna distress this bottom a little more so it's kind of like this see this is starting to dry over here and then I will be ready to wax and I will come back and uh, we will figure out this waxing process I am ready to finish off my bowl it is pretty much dry. The paint on the outside is dry. I think that um, the paper itself is probably still damp way down in there, <laughs> but that's okay. It will dry out eventually. I did a little experiment on the bottom, as you can see. I was wondering what would happen if I dry brushed a little of the uh, Prussian blue fabric paint on it that we did on the base coat. And I love it. It's beautiful. I also went ahead and waxed it and finished it or sealed it. And I'll show you how to do that. So yeah, the Prussian blue just really gave it some depth. I'm not sure if I want to do it on the whole thing. And I don't mind it just being on the bottom, you know. No biggie. Um, I'm just going to start waxing and then see how I feel about it. And uh, what I did here, I started with the DIY wax. Comes a little thingy like this. And you want to be careful about when you put on any kind of wax or a sealer because it can lift this paint. You know, we, as we've seen, if this clay paint gets wet, it reactivates, right? So I just. I, what I do is, like, especially on the sealer, I just make sure that I wipe my brush before I stick it back in my container, or I pour some out into a smaller container. And with the wax here, I just kind of um, wipe off my brush now and then to get any chalk or clay residue off of there. Speaking of experiments, did I say experiment? I don't think I did, but it was in my head, so... <laughs> That's where I am. You remember that crusty brush that I stuck in here? Yeah, well, about, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes after I stuck it in there, I pulled it out just to see if it had let up at all. And I don't know if you can tell, but yeah, it's completely fine now. It just needs to be washed out. I mean, it was hard, crusty that clay paint really dried in there and all it did was just let it soak and it kind of reconstitutes and <clears throat> you know I just I don't know that you could ruin a brush with it is what I'm saying not a big deal for me I don't use fancy brushes and I don't really think you need to with this paint unless you're painting a, a something you know like a scene or whatever but anyway it's nice to know that that it's difficult to destroy your brushes so I'm going to wax here and okay oh, yeah I think I, what I was starting to say is I started with this started waxing along you know just apply it however I think if you're um, putting this on furniture you're supposed to let it dry overnight or completely dry and then buff it to a sheen or whatever yeah, I just kind of ignore those instructions because this isn't furniture. And I don't have time for that. <laughs> I don't have time to follow those kind of instructions. So, I'm just, uh, yeah, 
going to put it on here, buff off the excess, and then put my polycrylic on here. And that's what I did. And I went through, or I did this with the DIY um, wax, but I just felt like it really wasn't, I don't know, maybe it was absorbing too much, or it that doesn't make any sense at all. Maybe it wasn't absorbing enough. I don't know. Something about it, <clears throat> I just felt like maybe um, Daddy Vans would have been better. So I put Daddy Vans on it instead. And I really, I don't think there was really that much of a difference. I think in this case, you could probably use them interchangeably. They, I mean, it's, when you use it, you can tell they're not the same. You know, they're, they're a little different. But um, I'm thinking it doesn't mean one's different bad and the other's different good. So I don't know. Yeah, you can tell I'm kind of hem hawing around because in my mind, like the jury's still out. I'm just going to have to do some more experimenting to see if if um, I can use the Daddy Vans in place of the DIY wax if I wanted to. Now, if I was doing furniture, you know, like legit furniture, I think I would definitely stick with the recommended wax. I would use the recommended drying time. <laughs> And not deviate much from that. <laughs> um, yeah, because, you know, furniture. But this is paper, y'all. We can uh, we can wing it, and it's going to be okay. <laughs> so I'm going to go through, just wax everything. I want to get into my little nooks and crannies, because, you know, the wax is what brings out the color. You can definitely tell where you've waxed and where you haven't right and this is what I want so I'm going to take my time get into all my nicks and crannies wax everything and then just put a coat of polycrylic over the top and and what I did on this bottom part you know I put the wax on and then I just kind of rubbed off the excess just like when we use um Daddy Vans in our on our in our journals and on paper, you just put it on, you wipe off the excess, and then you can continue on with um, painting over it or gluing over it. And you know, as long as you don't have a bunch of excess built up on there, it won't resist. It won't won't act like too much of a resist. So I will continue on and. Be back shortly. <laughs> I really like how this turned out. <laughs> I really, really do. I um, waxed and buffed off just as much of the wax as I could, and I didn't get it all off. I know this because when I was putting the polycrylic on, the wax was goobering up my brush. And guess what? It was fine. It did not ruin the polycrylic. It went ahead and dried, probably mixed with a little wax, but um, yeah, it worked. So, wax, I used mostly Daddy Vans, um, wiped off the excess that I could, put in the, put on the polycrylic. I used this little brush like this to kind of get in here in these little spots because I really wanted to cover it. And that's mostly where the wax gunked up and mixed with the polycrylic. And then I just went, oh, <laughs> you know, and smeared it everywhere else. So somehow, by the grace of God, <laughs> apparently you can mix Daddy Van's wax with polycrylic and it's all okay. I don't know how, but yeah, it worked. So um, I did that through this whole thing. You know, in here I had put a dry brushed on a little bit of that Prussian blue paint. I didn't do it on the rest because I just didn't feel like it added enough to make it worth it and um, I would definitely do this again I'm gonna save up for more of the paint colors and um, I do recommend them and it's kind of rare for me to say yeah save up your grocery money and just blow your whole week's budget on paint rarely do I do that because I'm all about the cheaper alternative but I don't know a cheaper alternative to this paint and um, I'm really loving what it's doing on paper. 
so yeah I, I would say it's worth picking it up and I don't remember if I said or not that it has almost no odor because I know some some of you are really bothered by paint odors it's got almost none and it is it's non-toxic it's um, just super super safe and natural cleanup is easy as I showed you um, there are a few things I would do different. Oh, first of all, yeah, don't choose something this complicated <laughs> to begin with. <laughs> uh, like I said, I, I think I mentioned that I would not have bothered layering all the colors in these areas where it was really hard to distress. I did manage to get in there and distress a little bit, but yeah, waste of time. I would have done that different. Um, I mean, other than that, I mean, if you're... You know, oh yeah, and the I found that I didn't mind the white showing through. Now I really think that if I had not put on those the base coat with the polycrylic over it, I would probably have had a lot more white showing. I just have a feeling. So I'm glad that I did it, but I think the next time I do it, I'll probably put a base coat again, but I won't be so fussy about it. You know, because... And I don't know why, because this showed, and I love it, but when it happened over here, I didn't, so maybe it just depends on your mood, I, you know, I'm not sure. So, anyway, yes, this is fabulous, and here is the pillow from my living room, and look, mermaid tail goes perfectly with my pillow and my curtains, and, um, oh yes, don't forget to, um, you know, if you use your paper towels for um, distressing or just wiping off your brush, you can save them. I, I did a little treatment on these that um, I'll do. I'll have to talk about that in another video. But I'm going to just add them to my super weird bin full of painty paper towels. <laughs> Most of these are alcohol ink, but there's just some different, just, the, and that's all they are. They're paper towels, and I cannot part with them. And I have used them before. There may even be a video out there of how I've used them. I can't remember, but yeah, there we have that. Um, okay, I think that's all I've got. Y'all, thank you so much for hanging with me and watching this technique, and I hope you'll give it a try. Look for the paint it at a um, local place you can go to Debbie's uh, website I'll, I'll give you all the links down below and you can find a retailer near you uh, so that you don't have to pay shipping if you've got no choice but to pay shipping uh, like I said I, it's worth it to get a couple of jars and just see what you can do with it um, tell Debbie I said hey she has no clue who I am <laughs> So tell her I said hey, so it'll like super confuse her. <laughs> All right, y'all. That's it. The end. <laughs>